Back you gaming. Hey there, broskies. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. So today we're gonna be talking about the top three, but really six non-fated frontline units in game. This involves both the healing and tank type units and why I chose them. But before we begin, hi guys, I am Wagyu, and if you are new to the channel, here at Wagyu Gaming, we cover the latest and most trendy mobile games that you should be playing. We also do some tips and tricks for games such as Exos Heroes, Light of Tell, and Trails of Crestoria. If you are into any of those, then please consider subscribing to your Broski's channel. So why top 3, but really 6? Because a lot of the spots have ties. I did not want to degrade the units by ability in, a, in the game, so I made it so it would be a tie. Especially units that have very similar purpose and very similar skills. So yeah, it was worth the tie, I guess. So we begin with my favorite non-fated and non fate core unit in-game, Kaya. Why Kaya? Well, for me, in my opinion, she is the best pure healer in-game. And I have really enjoyed her as a unit and I have actually started building her up. No, I've been building her up. She actually has six stars now. And I think she has a few fated gear. Yeah, she has a very decent amount of fated gear. And I picked Kaya because again, she's the best pure healer in-game. Like for example, her first skill heals 27% of own HP and also cleanses and debuffs, cleanses debuffs and damage over time effects on all allies. So quite, quite useful. And this only increases as you awaken her. And by the way, this is a team-wide heal. So she's a really strong unit for a 3-star unit. And her second skill is Heart Strong, which heals all allies by 55% of own HP. And then cleanses all debuffs and damage over time as well. So yeah, again, this also increases as you awaken her. And also, this is a burst heal. So meaning if you have more than 5 mana, because this requires 5 mana. If you have 6 mana, it heals a bit more. And that's up to 10, so this can be quite a very powerful heal. So yeah, that's our number 1 in our list, Kaya. The number 2 in our list is just right beside her. And that would be Digas. Digas is one of my favorite characters again in-game. So why Digas? Well, in any other game, a unit that has Provoke, increase HP, and shares it with his allies. Plus, he also disables units, the enemy units, all of them, not just one, not just two, but the whole team. They would be god tier in other games, guys. But this is XO0, so you know, it's quite different. So yeah, I guess that's why I like Digas, because he has all the important utility that you would be needing from a tank. He's not just that viable right now, but maybe with his new fate, upcoming Fate Core, he might get an improvement, but we'll see. I'm very excited, and as you can see as well, I also got him 6 starred. Because before I got Garf and Ulum, I only had Digas as my tank, so I had to build him up, up to 6 star level 80, alongside with FC Anna, Zeon, and Bathory. They were my first few characters that I built for PvP. So yeah, number 2 was is Digas. But guys, this is where the ties begin, because there are two more characters in this list that have very similar utility to Digas. And those two are Tantalo, this dude right here, this buff dude, and Luke. So both of them have block 2, very similar to Digas, and they also provoke the enemy units. But these two have heal over time. So they, they heal 20% of their attack for 5 turns, every turn. So they're quite useful. If you get hit, they heal. So a tank with a heal. Imagine that, guys. Again, in any other game, these tanks would be very OP. So let's start first with Tantalo. They have... At first, I thought they were twins. But they have different uh, skill 1 and skill 2. So Tantalo's skill 1 deals 71% damage to all enemies. And this also inflicts Provoke. Imagine that, guys. His passive is a Provoke. His first skill is a Provoke. So... Yeah, really useful in PvP and any other content in-game. And alongside this, he also has Body Check, which deals 300% damage to one enemy. And this inflicts Paralyze, guys. Although just to one enemy, unlike Digas, which inflicts uh, Frozen to the whole team. So yeah, very similar. And then for Luke, Luke, his first skill, Deals 150% damage to one enemy and afflicts Provoke. Again, Provoke. Just to one enemy this time for 4 turns. Still quite useful. Especially if the enemy has an Ulum or whatnot and then you just want to taunt that per 
that taunt that character just so the break would go to your tank and maybe they can survive until the break is over so yeah quite useful again another unit which increases his own hp by 43 percent for nine turns and shares health with all allies for 18 turns guys just a very good unit a very useful unit and has really high utility so yeah that's it for our number two and number three would be two healers they have quite very similar skills let's just refilter the character list to see them so it's legger or ledger i don't really know how to say his name her name and karin so both of them have very similar skills they both have first aid I mean, even the Shelter Investigator 4 increased damage by 200% against Monomos with Nature Barrier are very, very similar, except that they have different elements. Yeah. So the first aid heals 100% of attack to an ally if they take damage and drops their health by 20%. So they also gain mana when they are hit. Because they are frontline units, so yeah. And both of them also have revives. like. Ledger has heals all allies by 13% of own maximum HP, cleanses all debuffs and damage over time effects on all allies, revives all dead allies, and this is a burst skill. Again, this is a burst skill. This only requires 3 mana. I believe Ledger has the fastest revive in game. So meaning, this is a burst attack, so meaning that if your mana is more than 3, she heals more than 13%, it increases per mana. I just don't know how much, but yeah, that's how burst works in this game. And Karin also has heal, similar to Ledger. Also a burst he burst revive. And she requires 5 mana though, but she heals a bit more than Ledger. So this time she heals 27% of own HP to all allies and also revives all dead characters. Again, cancels, uh, cancels debuffs and damage over time. So they also have heals, attack, attack and then heal. They don't have the pure heal like Kaya does. But Ledger does an AoE attack first and then AoE heal by 27% of own max of own HP to all allies when the skill hits. So if it misses, it doesn't heal. So Karin though, on the other hand, deals 210% damage to one enemy and heals one ally by 40% of own maximum health. When the skill hits. So it's very similar to Ledger. Although I would give an edge on this to Karin because she doesn't need to do an AoE attack first before healing since the game isn't really built for AoE units right now and so it would be counterintuitive to do a attack and then heal so basically you just remove the heal again because of the Dragon Blood and Wrath passive to get the game currently has. So guys, those are our top 3 but actually six non-fated and non-fate core units in-game. So if you guys would want to, be, to do a build video on any of these characters, do let me know in the comment section below. I will gladly do so. If this video has helped you in any way or found it entertaining or useful or educational, then please do leave a like. It would really help us grow the channel. If you would like to see more of our content as well, from yours truly, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next video. Oh. Uh...